While a perfect solar eclipse was the catalyst for Gonzalez and Richard's hypothesis, their observations would never have been possible without another, more familiar example of the correlation between life and discovery, the atmosphere of the Earth. It's striking when you see pictures of the Earth from the Apollo missions or other spacecraft and you see this very thin layer of the atmosphere surrounding the Earth that sustains all the life that we know on Earth. And so you need a certain mix of elements uh, to support a complex biosphere uh, like ours. Not just any atmosphere will do. Our appreciation of the Earth's atmosphere has increased significantly during the last 40 years as exploratory spacecraft have probed the solar system. These missions have confirmed that within the Sun's family of more than 70 planets and moons, the Earth is one of seven bodies enveloped by a thick canopy of gas. Yet among these seven, only the Earth's atmosphere can sustain complex life. And only the Earth's atmosphere is transparent. It's an atmosphere that's made up of mostly oxygen and nitrogen with very little carbon dioxide and very little other carbon compounds or atoms in the atmosphere that gives you a transparent atmosphere. If we had too much carbon in the atmosphere, we get hazes, organic hazes in the atmosphere, like you see on the, the large moon Titan, for example. The dense shroud of gas that blankets Saturn's largest moon resembles the atmosphere surrounding Neptune, Uranus, Saturn, Jupiter, and the greenhouse cauldron of Venus. None of these alien worlds know the stars or even offers a clear view of the sun. Now, of course, if you were suddenly transported to Titan or Venus or to one of the outlying gas giant planets, the lack of a clear view of the universe wouldn't be much of an issue because you'd be dead. But that's precisely the point. If we're right, if the conditions for habitability and scientific discovery appear in the same places, then you're going to get conditions like you do on Earth, an atmosphere that sustains complex life like ourselves and also enables scientific discovery of the universe around us. The virtues of such an atmosphere are continually tested. As the Earth moves through space, it is bombarded by radiation from throughout the universe. This radiation is emitted by the sun and other celestial objects, including supernovas and distant galaxies. It reaches our planet in wavelengths described as gamma, X-ray, ultraviolet, visible, infrared, microwave, and radio. Together, they comprise the electromagnetic spectrum. Almost all of these wavelengths are invisible to the eye and either lethal or useless to organic life. Yet within this spectrum of frequencies, a thin sliver of radiation proves essential to plants, animals, and human beings. In other words, there's really just a very narrow part of the electromagnetic spectrum that's going to be useful for living processes like photosynthesis. It's not as if life could have evolved to use gamma radiation or X-ray radiation or something like that. There's really just a narrow part of the spectrum that would be useful to life processes. Well, as it turns out, that's also the same narrow part of the spectrum that is the most informative about the various structures that we discover in the universe around us. These specific frequencies that enable plants to manufacture food and astronomers to observe the cosmos represent less than one trillionth of a trillionth of the universe's range of natural electromagnetic emissions. Fortunately, it is the type of light our sun produces in abundance, and that most easily penetrates the filtering shield of our atmosphere to reach the surface of the Earth. It's a remarkable coincidence that the kind of atmosphere that's needed for complex life like ourselves does not preclude that life from observing the distant universe. It's a surprise. It's something that you wouldn't expect just chance to produce. Why would the universe be such that those places that are most habitable also offer the best opportunity for scientific discovery?